and we're live so welcome 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 uh, to uh, my last stream as a develop uh, researcher and developer so a sad day for me this is it end of my year well i said it could be done and we did it so how did the meeting go with the bosses hmm it went very well it went very well indeed um they have oh, i'll leave you in suspense Right, so let's finish off everything that we were doing. That might be a help for starters. So let's tie up all the loose ends. I've still got my little virtual box here. Oh, and hello to my viewer. Good to see you. So let's just uh, start up my... Uh, Linux machine here and it's out of position again it keeps moving I'll reposition this screen then there we go done here we are here's my uh, machine I've been using for the last two weeks to get all the finals done uh, I had to use this one uh, just because I wanted to get everything done in a hurry as uh, I was running out of time <laughs> oh yes time limits time constraints it's all good fun um, console please I've just done a massive update on this as well which is now a waste of time but hey ho uh, -dum -ba -da -ba -dum. Let's get that up so we can see it. And let's cd to uh, desktop. Um, C++. Mm -hmm. uh, 3 a D game programming. Tutorial. That's the final. I got it wrong, did I? Ah. Yeah, I got it wrong. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. Thank you. So, what was the final build? Um. Let's have a look. This is the final build. Uh, there's no real point in looking at that. Uh, oh, well, there is. There you go. Got our frames per second going down the right-hand side there. It's working nicely. Uh, 60 frames per second on a no card. It keeps dropping, though. And the, more, and the longer I carry on, the more it's going to drop. Uh, because we don't have a graphics card. So, this is the movement. It looks a bit weird because I've used acceleration, deceleration on it. This is all using the ECS system. Okay. Uh, we've got a little square box added in, which we can bump into. See? Uh, interaction with the world. And it's all using that ECS system with the inputs. And, yeah, I'm going to start losing smoothness now so that shows that it's working um, both of these two objects are now solid and that one is stationary and static and this one can move that's rather interesting considering the readout that I'm getting on the right hand side here the th how the heck did I manage that that's impossible remember <coughs> you could equate this to a computer that was built in 1995 running um, Ubuntu which is really what I've got here um, I haven't got anything at all 
So I've got to go back to that one. That's it. And show you how it was done. Can't show you all of it, but hey ho, I'll show you how the basics work out anyway. Okay, the Balkan. Hmm, it was joyous to do. Joyous. It's all here in the main. So how is it done? Um, oh, it's not here, is it? I removed it all. Because I was going to show you. And go through it all. Ah. Okay. I'm going to have to see the... Um, Final version by the looks of it. Can I open the folder, please? Thank you. Uh, desktop. C plus plus. Uh, we'll have to do that one. Right. So source. A uh, new CS. Uh, this is the control system. Game CS. <coughs> so we have motion. Let's have a look at the, how that was done. Um, so a component was made using our ECS component called motion component. I gave it a vector 3F velocity and a vector 3F acceleration. Started with initial values. That's Remember, the components hold the data. The entity will have this assigned to it, so I'll show you in a minute. But um, the system that uses it, I've, it's obvious really that you put it in the same HPP because it makes more sense. So the motion system itself takes, adds the two components to start off with uh, as the constructor and constructs from base ECS system. Uh, virtual void update components is the only thing that we activate. So in this case, it um, has a transform, which we get from component zero, uh, which is velocity, and a motion component one. So motion is taken from acceleration. So velocity is how far? An acceleration is like a multiplier, I suppose. Yeah, all right, okay. And we are going to use the Forest Ruth uh, motion integrator uh, for the acceleration and everything. That's actually a good one to use, uh, as it can, as it complies with the rules of physics and. Velocity and acceleration are kept. They don't deteriorate over time. And all we do is a transform with the new position. We get the new position from the Forest Ruth uh, integrator. Have we got the integrators here? No, it's okay. Um, we put everything in there with the delta time. And that calculates a new position. And then we just set the transform to a new position. In other words, move the object. So that's the ECS system. If you don't know about Forest Ruth, you can look it up on Google. Um, I might have it here, though. If I have, I'll uh, explain it to you. Um, where is it, by the way? Let's have a look. Peak definition. It's in source. Motion integrators. Yeah, we do have them. Uh, OK, I'll go to source motion integrators. Then. So to show you how that was done, uh, source motion integrators. Let's have a look. There's a few. There's Verlet, Forest Ruth, and Modified Euler. Um, that's the fastest and the most least accurate. That's the good enough with accuracy. And I guess that Verlet's just well, um, very accurate, but 
Mm. Yeah, that's not the full, uh, is that the full definition? That's the definition, but it's, I don't think that's, no, that's the halfway stage. That's the good enough stage. This is the most accurate. So if I changed it over to Verlet, it would work faster. Yeah. Uh, because this is doing um, all the coefficients, uh, which is the forest Ruth coefficient, which is that mathematical equation there, and the complement. So those two I used on the Verlet to get this, as you can see, Verlet. So if I changed it over to Verlet, is it the same? This is going to be interesting. I might try this. No, I won't. It'll take time, and I haven't got time anymore. <laughs> so those are motion integrators. They can be looked upon Google. Uh, it's standard stuff. I would advise using this one. Or if that's too slow, use this one. I mean, I should really, on this system, I should be using Verlet not Forest Ruth. And if you are not really bothered about motion accuracy or anything like that, just use a very simplified one and you will get massive kind of speed. Um, you'll get one, two, three, four, five, so 50 times the speed of Forest Ruth. Yeah, depends on how many things you go in motion all over the place. Our main has been reduced it to run app, um, just a shader, the perspective, and the draw parameters. Uh, we s a render target. We then have a game render context, which is new. Sets up our game rendering pipeline, as it were. The game itself is just an app. Uh, return game load and run scene. Yeah. Main does nothing. So let's look for our game app. That's here. And it's all been stripped down. As you can see, this is where the ECS system is. Um, on the ECS, I actually took the systems out of ECS and put them into uh, ECS systems as ECS system list. Um, so that we can have different systems. We can have main systems and the rendering pipeline as separate things. We can update them separately. So that was my thoughts behind that. And in here, so here's our test interaction. Uh, blah, 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 collider component, motion component. You know, it's just that kind of thing. So it takes a transform component, collider, motion, transform, collider, motion. Right, okay, I'll not think about that. How to interact is simple. You take your transform and your motion, your motion component, velocity, velocity equals minus one. In other words, all you do is bounce off, but you add a little. So it bounces a bit more. So th the bounce is real. If I took that off, it would probably work better on my screen. Well, on this system anyway. But you can mess around with that. I would say no, what minus one point zero one rather than one. Personally, it should have an extra bit of velocity on the bounce because it has it. It's a weird. It's a weird physics system. <coughs> it's not a true physics system, so you have to conserve momentum. And that figure there, yeah, I'm not happy about that. It does work. That's that rotational stupid thing, using a quaternion, nice. Uh, the game loop has now been massively simplified to set up, and there's your game loop there from while. So you do your FPS counter, uh, while your frame rates are high, you can do more updating. So this is the actual whole of the update system here. App, process messages, ECS, update system, interaction world, process interactions, and that's it. 
See, those three things is the whole simulation. And then after you get to 60, when you get to a time of 16 milliseconds, you jump into here and render. Roughly, same. And then there's a sleep one just to make sure your processor isn't overloading. I could take that out myself. That would probably work, actually. Um, a lot of people say never do that. Yeah, I'm a person that says always do that. Otherwise, you're overworking your processor. And if your game can't run smoothly without... If you have to cut corners and take that out to make your game run smoothly, then there's something wrong with your game. Rendering is render context clear. Obviously, clear screen or clear buffer, it should be, really. ECS update your systems. Uh, game render context flush. So that puts everything into the pipeline. And that flushes the pipeline to the screen. And then you use swap buffers. And there it is on the screen. FPS plus plus. Yeah. Um, that's roughly it. I mean, all of this is just load models, um, set your arrays, and the A8BBs is for collision detection, which is a box collision detector. If you don't know what one of those is, you can, again, look them up. There are sphere collision detectors as well. They're all very simple. Uh, they will be going into the final thing, so don't worry. Textures, loading up a texture. More texture, horizontal, vertical, input controllers. So this is your keyboard controls, A, D, left, right, W, S, up, down. And create your components. As you can see, it's very easy to create components. Then you create your entities. And lots taken out there. And then you create your systems. Like that. And that's it. Very straightforward stuff comes out of it. Very easy to create a game. You could make uh, a platform game today with this and then do like Asteroids tomorrow and then you could do a 3D third person shooting the next day. The whole thing runs smoothly and beautifully and interacts and that's what I wanted. Interaction. That's all I wanted out of this. That was the whole research base. So we got it. ECS works. Fantastic. Um, I'm still interested in the m in my Mega Cube component. That is so funny. Yeah, it doesn't move. So yeah, but update component. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is so usable. It's untrue. You can see how few. Um, things you need to get a little thing like a, a mega cube going, which is a stupidly me <laughs> that is just ridiculous. You just wouldn't do that. <coughs> um, there's the renderable mesh. So your renderable mesh component, your renderable mesh system. Uh, so these are the things that get rendered here. That's how you render. Uh, so you render the mesh using the vertex array, the texture, the transform, to matrix. Very, very simple rendering pipeline. So it's just that lot. And those are taken out of uh, the vertex and the texture. Vertex, uh, texture. Your transform comes from the transform component, which can be altered by uh, the systems, obviously. The transform system, or the movement system in this case. And that's how it works. Hmm. Have I got any pure systems in here? No. Motion integrators, interaction, that's your physics. Game rendering context. Ah, yes, that's interesting. That's it. Um, let's just have a look at the HPP in a minute. Thank you. There should be a bit more to it. So, game rendering context, you set it up with all of the, these parameters. 
So it's got everything, absolutely everything about uh, your graphics and how you, how you want them to be displayed. And then uh, flush just swaps and swaps buffers and stuff. Does it? I think it does. Draw, second clear, yeah. Update buffer, draw buffer, and clear. So it's in the draw way, it must be swapping. And it just takes all the bits and pieces that you've fed in. And that's your draw call. But notice it's num transforms, which means it's, um, you've, we've gone over this. <coughs> before in which we've, we've done batch rendering well that's a batch renderer so it will batch render um, each object so each vertex array depending on the number of transforms it will do uh, each object in those locations using those parameters so it's a, it's, as you can see, it's a pointer. So that's your entity. That's that's what used to be called an entity. It's no longer an entity. An entity is just a list of components. Uh, one of those components is a transform. So it's just number of transforms for that one model. I'll call it. So if there are fifty models of that type, it, there will be fifty transforms, and that one call will draw all 50 of them. There you go. You can say tiles. If there's like a, a thousand tiles, then it will draw all a thousand tiles. If the tiles are the same. So that's just same model rendering, uh, batch rendering, as we've been over before and looked at before on this. Um, I think it was in the game club, C++ game club part, we did uh, batch rendering, covered all of that. That's interesting. Um, no. No, that's everything. Uh, there's a bit of JSON in here just for design purposes. Tags, yeah. Alright, so that's it. Done. And it works. So that's me happy. That means I can now shut this down and get rid of it. Fantastic. So that's the end. Wow. It's the last time I close this, isn't it? Yeah. It is the last time I close this. Hmm. Just trying to figure out what happened to my debris. Ah, I see. Right, so I can keep this actually. I don't really need to delete it um, under the information. Uh, no settings. Uh, storage. The whole thing's only taking up 14 gigabytes. So I think I'm going to leave it for now. Let's see what we are going to be getting up to, shall we? So we'll need one of these thingies, I think. Okay, don't need Twitch on. Um, on YouTube, there is a little button here. Oh, got some messages. Yeah, okay. Amber Skies is my uh, web page which is www.amberskies.org.uk and what we're going to be doing here is using github code and we are going to be uh, developing Qt Amber Skies <laughs> does that really stay, say what it, I think it says? Yes Blades, that does say what you think it says I've been given the go ahead by the solicitors to use Qt uh, but under the provision that everything is public. So we're going to have a git up.
which also means we can have more than one contributor. Was it just a master branch? Yeah, that's all I've done. Um, so that's that really. Um, where is the? Am I not logged in? Yes, I am. Here they are. So we have our project, uh, Amber Three D, and initial setup opened by me. I'm Amber Skies, so well, I'll be representing Amber Skies on this project anyway. Um, in the next two weeks, I have to set up um, the Amber Three D department, as it were. Amber Skies, so that if anybody wants to support or don donate to the project and help us out, I've got finances for about 12 months. That's all I'll have. Uh, if we get support, um, then we will be able to continue, obviously. But that means I am going to need an, um, an account an Amber Skies account because it can't go to me. Um, money can't be donated to me, it's got to go to the project. So there will be a project account uh, open within the next two weeks, I hope. It'll probably take longer to do the paperwork, but hey ho. But at least the code will be freely available to anybody who wants to uh, do anything. I've also found this interesting GitHub thingy. So, Qt Amber Skies, current repository, master, fetch origin. I've got to work out how to use all of this, but uh, it does give me like opening Visual Studio Code. So, I click on that. This is on Windows, unfortunately. And it comes up with. Um, my repository and I can then continue to use it and update my repository properly rather than just relying on this I'll have uh, changes history so everything will be there as you can see I haven't done much I've committed a dot thingy a filter and a readme file that's all I've done so far um, I've set up the project. Uh, if anybody wants to help me out, they, I am, I would be m more than happy, because obviously there's a wiki to do. Because uh, you, you're going to see me, I, if, as I'm the only person on this project at this point, that is what you're going to see me do to start off with, is go through everything on here. So as you can see, initial setup is here. And it's open by me it has to be done. Uh, pull requests, there aren't any, haven't done anything. Uh, projects, one. Uh, wiki, welcome to the QT Amber Skies wiki. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with that. I haven't even thought about it yet. Security insights and settings, so I'll, I don't know, how do I settle this home? Because this should be able to be seen as a proper page. And wiki locally. I mean, this is going to be the first time in ages I've used GitHub. As people will know, that other stuff. I mean, what's that? 2017. Yeah, so they, these are old last year and the year before. So that says something. Oh, something I wanted to know. That was a good point. Um, obviously, I've got now an absolute massive reference library, which I've created over the last year on purpose. Uh, on October the 4th, 2018, that's when that started. So I think, yes, it was last November. Wow. 
I got anything before that. Um, that's season one. March 13th, 2019. So yeah, this is going all the way back now to last November. So November is going to be the prime start date. Um, so it's one, two. I've got nearly three weeks off. Wow, that's good to get everything sorted out and what I want to do. Um, and it'll be Friday the 1st of November. No, because I I won't be opening it on that date. It'll be the 4th. Monday the 4th of November will be the 1st episode. So, let's get my uh, notes out. I'll just put that there for a minute. So, sticky notes. Right, so... What used to happen was Monday to Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Well, that's going to go Thursday, Saturday is going to be a day off. No, I can't have a day off on a Saturday. <sighs> Sunday sailing's stopping with us. Um, Fridays, let's pop this to Friday a minute, Friday is going to be XCOM day, uh, Sunday sailing, so Monday to Thursday here. Space to Thursday. It will be We've done the doctors. Okay. So Mondays to Thursday starting on the fourth of November uh, from the 4th of November and it's 2019 isn't it uh, this will be development not research now so it's going to be amber skies development and so that will be hash one. And I need to date it. So each one is going to have to be dated now. And that's going to be the fourth. Uh, I'll just put date. So that's that done. That's going to be the main part, Monday to Thursday. Uh, Blades World will have to go, sorry. Friday XCOM day, Sunday sailing, I don't know what to do with Saturdays. If anybody's got any ideas that they want, I'll do them on Saturdays. So, Saturday. Requests. So, that'll do that. Sunday sailing, yes please. Oh, I so want my Sunday sailing. What are we on today now? We're on a Saturday. Oh yes, I'm going sailing tomorrow. Hey. Um yeah, I think I'm gonna start with that structure. So on the fourth of November we will be starting. Uh I will be starting from nothing, zero, a blank slate. Uh I will have the git the GitHub set up. Uh, so I can clone from it uh, to start. I'm going to see if we can get this thing, this QT 
thingy working on uh, Manjaro. That's going to be fun. I might use Arch for that. Yeah, I think I will be doing. Because it doesn't matter, I'm going to be inside a, a VM, aren't I? So it doesn't matter what I do. Excellent. That's fantastic. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Yes, support. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be one of those horrible ones where I'm going to need support from you lot. How how am I to approach that? Am I to be blunt, direct, and ask for it every single video? Like you see most videos asking, which I don't want to do. Or I'll, I could open each video with a support message, couldn't I? Or something like that. Because this is going to be privately funded initially by me. Yeah, it's my my money that's going into this. <laughs> oh, you lucky lucky people! I'm going to be paying for it for the first year. Am I rich? Well, slightly, yeah. Uh, but not in the money sense. I'm rich because I'm happy. I'm about to do what I've always wanted to do in my life. How many people can say that? And I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. So, um, how long will we be on now? 36 minutes, okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah. www.amberskies.org.uk It is official. We we do, well, Amber Skies owns it. Uh, that's owned by Amber Skies. That's their website. Uh, they are letting me use that for GitHub. Uh, that's how we got together, actually. That's how it all started with uh, my GitHub stuff being QT3D because nobody else knew how to use it. So that's how I started out. Um, yeah, I think I think we've got a good foundation. We've got all of the code we're ever going to need um, and everything else. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So it's, what, two weeks on Monday? Is it? Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, one, two weeks on Monday. No, three weeks on Monday. Wow. Fourth of November, yeah, three weeks. Wow. I haven't had a break in so long, it's untrue. Five years. This will be my first break from researching this. And I'm trying to think of how much material I've lost in that time, but I know how to find it, so I don't care. Yeah. That'll be good. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it in suspense, really, for all the rest of it, but uh, what are we doing? Uh, we are going to make, initially, a network. Um, called Amber Skies. And then we are going to go on to make the browser for that network, which it will be 3D. So it will be a 3D network. That's the first initial steps. The very first steps on the network will be to make a chat um, or some kind of communications. So a basic, well, we'll start with basic chat and then become localized chat as we integrate more and more. So you can go to a, some, a, some part of the network and chat with people on that part of the network type of thing. Um, as if you were in a 3D world. I would like it uh, voice rather than typed, but it will initially be typed. Sorry. Uh, I think that's going to be the easiest one to do. To get up and running. Um, because as soon as we've got that up and running, I can deploy it. 
and we will have a chat system, a private communication system for anybody who's interested in Amber Skies. Um, if you're worried about security, simple, there ain't gonna be none. There's no money involved. Uh, I'm the only one, one who's gonna get out of pocket at this rate, um, so uh, there's, there's, there's no reason for hacking. People can, but everybody's going to be anonymous on this system, so nobody can find out anything about anybody else. So, uh, what is the security of the system? <laughs> Doesn't need any. There's nothing to hack. As long as people aren't stupid and put the real names on up there, it'll be fine. But that's their choice, not mine. So, on that note, uh, people will be responsible for their own security. I will not be responsible for any security at all, because none is needed. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That's it. I'm going to go and play a game. In fact, I'll probably stream it. So, um, catch you in half an hour. I'll do some XCOM. How about that? Take care, peeps. It's been a great year. It's been a great research. I'm glad it's all over, and I've got the finally got the go-ahead to develop this. I've got the finances that I've been saving up for the year. Uh, hope I get enough support that it will be. I will be able to complete the project, or at least complete most of the project, and hopefully uh, it'll be good times. Good times all around. And in the meantime, have fun.